Hello, welcome to the Blessing Report. In this video, we are talking about faith and finances, Christians' relationship with money and business. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. And if you're new here, I'm Winston Mayo. This is the Blessing Report, and let's get to the show. Hello, welcome to The Blessing Report, the channel for comedy and conviction, entertainment and edification. I'm Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, and today we have a very cool video. We are talking about faith and finances and financial freedom, Christian attitudes towards money, business, and ministry. Because a lot of people have a struggle of trying to draw the line of where industry, ministry, and business um, can coexist or what are the Christian attitudes or approach when it comes to handling your business and so on and so forth. And so um, we're just going to get out of the way um, the misconceptions. Um, a lot of people have like this attitude of don't hit the gospel, which is very important. People do not hit the gospel. <laughs> and um, financial gain is somehow um, gain at the expense of righteousness and godliness, but the two are not mutually exclusive. Poverty is not from God and doesn't mean that you're holy and righteous and neither is being blessed or having finances or possessions an indication of God's presence because the devil can give gifts just as good. Well, not just as good, but just the same. Um, so just make that distinction to also um, just Christian attitudes towards money in general uh, for it's a misconception that people say money is the root of all evil so what does the Bible say first Timothy 6 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some covet after they are have erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows and um, just in the same vein, you have Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. And I guess the last one would be Mark 10, 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven, right? So what are um, Christian attitudes when it comes to money, right? Um, somehow the two should not mix. But if you understand anything about ministry, anything just about regular expenses, money does come into ministry when it comes just um, production of Bibles, having a church, um, having um, some paid positions, some unpaid positions. So what are um, our attitudes when it comes to money and how should we view it? Because a lot of people, especially um, in like media industry, entertainment industry, um, have a hard time reconciling this when you have a profession in the arts that is directly correlated to ministry. So I'm a Christian comedian, so people are like, hey, you can get paid, but don't get paid too much because that's wrong. Or um, you should be doing it for free. But um, we need to reconcile that certain things are not standards. So basically we're just winging it. So in certain, I've been in enough church ministries that there are professions that are paid for at one church and professions that are not paid for in another church, right? And so, Certain people would be like, how are you charging to be a, a musician, right? Uh, but in other churches, if you're the accountant for the church, you're getting paid. While I have other churches where the accountant is volunteering. So why do we have um, basically this hierarchy when it comes to service that a service in a ministry setting is not worthy of um the experience, time, and effort to be reciprocated with um, any type of like financialness, right? Or a lot of people are like, um, the pastor shouldn't get paid and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
that's wrong. <laughs> and we're just going to go into the scripture and what it says about um, basically paying um, people for their ministry. So that is 1 Timothy 5, 8. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Another translation says, A workman is worthy of their labor. And so um, in the New Testament, it speaks about the fact that if people are taking care of you spiritually, right? They are taking care of your soul. The minimum that you can do is take care of their natural. So like um, give them like bread to eat, a house, not like a house, but somewhere to live and rest their head and um, so on and so forth. So where the problem is, is that the Christian market is one of the most profitable markets you can ever get into. And it's very easy to pimp the Christian market because when it comes to marketplace value, Christians are willing to pay three times regular rate for any business or service or product that has a Christian label on it. So this is why um, we see a lot of um, people coming up and profiting, but being false prophets. Um, they're called like ravaging wolves in their heart. And so, you have like two sides of the coin. You have um, people who are doing wrong to the church because you can get money, you can get really rich really fast, right? And um, their greed is driving them over here. But then you have people that are genuine and they don't know how to navigate the space and they're being taken advantage of because people want to either um, underpay drastically market value and um, People also want to have you um, basically manipulating and guilting people for um, industries that should be paid for. And um, with this, we have to have an understanding that faith and finances do not have to be um, split to a degree. And um, I think that um, this is illustrated through Paul, right? And um, in the New Testament, this was like brought up. And um, Paul says that I worked with my hands and I um, made sure that anything that was done in the ministry, I gave back to the people and anything that I earned, I did it so that my witness would be pure, right? And so we have to understand that this is nothing new. Like if Paul was like, um, had to basically advocate for himself or defend himself of like, yo, I'm not tricking people out here um, so much so that I'm doing ministry, but I'm also doing like a real job. Paul was a tent maker um, to facilitate ministry. Then we also um, may have to consider going to that type of extent because a lot of people want to do full time ministry um, and live off of it basically prematurely. And what happens is that um, your revenue coming in and the per cost per capita um, is more than um, what's being reciprocated. And then you're stressed. And then you start doing things uh, for money instead of uh, for the ministry. And so all the lines get skewed because you moved prematurely or um, if it's real, um, it's a lot of pride that, oh, I can't have a normal job and trying to do ministry. Almost like all the major players in the Bible had regular jobs, right? Jesus was a carpenter and he was the son of God. Luke was a physician and one of the main Bible scholars. Um, Paul was an apostle and a tent maker. Um, was it Matthew um, was like a tax collector? Pretty sure. And then you have um, Daniel, government official, um, Joseph, a government official. Um, so a lot of us, um, we need to have that type of posture, a sacrificial posture of you need to be okay with a regular job 
as an option to fund ministry. And so that's where um, faith and financial freedom comes from because um, poverty and like debt and bondage is not of God who is of overflow, abundance, and like wholeness and fullness. And this comes from Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 28 um, verses 12 and 13. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give to the rain and to the land of the season and to bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee to this day to observe and to do them. Right, so you have um, this and you also have Proverbs and Psalms where it says like a, um, a honorable man um, gives an inheritance to um, his children's children. So the Bible doesn't contradict, so we shouldn't have this mindset that if anyone is somehow financially successful, they have to be doing some type of spiritual wrong. But in direct correlation with that, we have to understand that the church is not a business, right? It does business, but itself is not a business because if we're trying to profit over people, we choose possessions over people all the time, over financial gain. And so um, this is what we have in right Matthew um, 13 about the four grounds. And um, the third soil is like one of the most important ones. It says, um, he that receives seeds among the thorns, he that hears the word and care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches chokes out the word and he becomes unfruitful. And um, this is what we really see. Um, powerless churches, um, big congregations, um, false conversions, because it is a false gospel. It's a prosperity gospel. Um, that God is not a Lord, he's not a king, he is not sovereign, he has no reverence, but he is a genie, he is a bank account, he is a brand, he is a business. And Jesus came to flip over the tables and whip people who were selling um, and turning the house of God into a den of thieves and what the Bible calls a den of merchandise. Because what? Um, this is a good Christian brand, but I can make Christian clothes. I can write Christian books. I can make Christian movies. I can do uh, relationship conferences. I can pimp the gospel um, because so many people are just entertained um, off of financial gain and stuff like that. So how do we navigate the space, right? And so I think those as the precept verses, but um, how do we get the right heart posture? It comes from Acts is a great example of this, but we're going to start with uh, Philippians 2, 3. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Um, in other translations, it says, count others more worthy than yourself, right? And so where um, Jesus said in Luke and um, somewhere else in the Gospels, he says, whatever you do to the least of these, you have done to me. And so um, our attitudes and postures towards money um, should not be that money is a supplication for character or um, service, right? Um, but just because you give your tithes, give your offerings or whatever, it does not mean that that's like instant salvation. That's the exchange. I did my money. I did my time. Then my heart is good. No, greed, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so um, what you cling on to, what you hold on to, um, that's an idol. And so that's why there's such a um, crucifixion of self dying to self. Um, in exchange of counting others more worthy than yourself. Um, the servant of all is the head of all and um, the last become first. So if you are holding on and uh, hoarding, if you don't um, 
have like a good measure for that like what does that look like Francis Chan has a great example um, of a description when it comes to do my uh, possessions possess me he says if anyone lives in lack while I live in abundance my preaching is false and so we need to look um, around if you go to like the um, wealth index I think if you make $22,000 a year, you're in like the top 85 percentile of the entire world. So in the United States, you're like, ah, oh, I'm broke, blah, 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 blah. Um, but w worldwide, you're not even close to poverty. And so um, that should be our attitude, but our attitude should not be like, oh my gosh, if you're a Christian and rich, you are doing wrong. We have a lot of rich people in the Bible, right? You have Job, a lot of possessions. And I do want to know, most of these people are in the Old Testament, so I think that's weird. Um, you have David, a lot of possessions. You have um, Solomon, a lot of riches, the richest man ever, a lot of possessions. So richness or success is no indication of like godliness, um, but it does say in the gospels, like the things of this world, like wherever you're, um, will like bind you here. Like if you have too much investment into the world, too much. So that's why uh, we really need to have that heart posture of giving, of thanksgive, um, thankfulness, thanksgiving, and gratitude um, that in the book of Acts is showcased. And what we see in the book of Acts is that the people sold their possession for the good of the people uh, so their land, so their houses to take care of those who are in need. Um, so a lot of people, if we just are like uh, Philippians 2, 3, count others more worthy than yourself. Think of your favorite outfit. Would you give that to somebody? Think of your favorite car. Most of us only have one car. Would you give that to somebody? Think of your favorite house would you give that to somebody? And so, like, for real, like, a lot of us, it would be for real, I, I'll be like, no. Um, but it, my heart and my posture towards God, if um, that is what he requires of me, um, should be the same as um, Abraham. And um, give that thing that means the most to me because a lot of us know the story of Abraham and Isaac is like, oh, I, I, I give something to God, I guess I get a ram in the thicket, in the bush, um, and he's not gonna require my son. But you have another parallel where a son is required for a sacrifice, Jesus. And when Jesus was required, he was required. When God requires something, we have to have that heart posture that um, we're okay with it. And that um, financial literacy is important for the ministry, right? Because if you do have um, Christians in positions of influence, but also um, Christians of expendable income and uh, financial flexibility and um, investment they could be a blessing to the ministry so you can um, make more Christian content you can send more missionaries you can buy more Bibles but if all of us are in poverty or we're all in debt it really limits that um, in the natural but we have to acknowledge that um, a lot of us we're very like carnally minded Western and American minded when it comes to money and um, really neglect like the spiritual aspect of um, money when it says like um, Malachi 3 that God rebukes the devourer. Some of us have like supernatural strongholds, generational curses, bloodline curses of poverty moving through us, right? And so um, acknowledge that, but some of us are very, um, not, no one can ever be too spiritual, but um, do not, are unpractical that's the word I'm looking for because the Bible says a man who does not work does not eat simple because what were people doing um, they were getting fat and um, reaping off of good-hearted Christians in Acts and it was like no you can't just be 
hear it not working. You have to do your part. And so um, don't be coming over here gossiping and getting drunk. And it, like this is like in the Bible. People are just gossiping, getting drunk, and eating everybody's food, and um, just leaving. <laughs> it sounds like church. Um, but if we are not able to take like the natural steps of working hard and um, supplementing that with only praying, only fasting, but no obedience, no work, no labor, then what does it profit? for us to be um, praying, but not be in position to be utilized or used by God, right? And so what um, should we do, right? Because like the love of money is the root of all evil. So how do we navigate the space? How, how do we price things? Um, I think one thing which is really important when it comes to um, this sort of stuff is um, prayer and fasting, like legit. Um, any opportunities that come by, know what is ministry, know what is, I don't know, a blessing, know what should be paid for. Um, so you're not taking advantage of, because we should be gentle as doves, but as wise as serpents, as the Bible instructs us to be. And so um, that, but also um, another step, I really want to emphasize um, the importance of offerings and tithes, tithes and offerings, because um, I think people just neglect that and um, don't know um, that there are biblical principles at work in like the spiritual realm uh, when it comes to finances and blessings um, that you are holding yourself up. So that's Malachi 3, 8 um, through 18. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say wherein have we robbed you in tithes and offerings ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed the uh, me even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith saith the lord the host if i will not open you the windows of heaven to pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all the nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. All right, so you heard it. Um, like, give tithes and offerings, and it is a great practice when it comes to prophecy. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it is a great practice when it comes to prophecy and hearing from God. Um, when it is like, Lord, what should I give? Like, tithes is a 10%. Like, you don't really have to think that much on tithes. But the offering is a great hearing from God. And don't doubt it. Like, if you hear $100, $1,000, give that thing quick before fear and doubt changes your mind. <laughs> and so... Um, that and also um, the importance of financial literacy. The Lord um, says like, we need to be set apart um, like a holy and separate nation, um, a chosen generation, stuff like that, because the Lord does not want us to look like the world. But in many aspects, the church does look like the world with our spending habits, with our divorce rates and um, just stuff like that. And so um, I'm not going to like make really big generalizations, but I do want to say, um, like in my experiences, black church and white church operates very differently. And that just comes from um, social economic class, social economic status, but also financial literacy and teaching your kids about like investments, a uh, 401k, a retirement plan, um, being an LLOC so you can obtain tax cuts, right? And so, it's definitely like a history in that um, dating back to um, before slavery, definitely in Egypt um, when it came to Moses and Pharaoh because they had taxes back then. Um, Jesus was born uh, during like a, a heightened tax um, in a, um, a census that was coming out. And so we need to acknowledge that, yo, we as a people, a Christian people, need to be able to know like 
all the stuff that the world knows them. The world knows like tax cuts and being an LLC, so you get like tax breaks and all that other stuff. So why are we like, no, I need to do it the spiritual way. Yes, we do it the spiritual way, but we also do it just the logical way and the practical way as well. And so um, how do we measure, right? Having a posture that is submitted to God, God honoring and um, God glorifying, um, so greed doesn't enter in because like especially when it comes to these Christian artists I know people don't want to like talk about um, like how much people are getting paid or whatever but I do think that um, your honorarium whatever you're charging can really separate you from the people you are called to and that's why Matthew 13 says the cares of this world strangle out um the word of god because like when like big churches are like paying you you can't say certain things because you don't want to offend them you don't want to um basically end your money but if we are self-sustained in god and financial free within ourselves um then we don't have to rely on that and you can speak freely you can give the gospel freely and then you can move freely um as you as the spirit wills you and it says it in uh first thessalonians as well is like um live quietly work with your hands being dependent on no man um that like people see like your good works right and so that's the point of like good works um matthew um let your light so shine before men that people see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So when Christians have great marriages, people in the world want to be like, yo, why do you have such a great marriage? Jesus. Uh, when people in the world is like, yo, you have great, a great house, great car, possessions don't matter, but you have great financial wisdom. How are you doing it? Jesus. So this is why... Um, Faith and financial literacy and financial freedom is important because it can be a tool for that. But um, don't think that financial gain um, is an equation for our salvation because if that is our measure for success, there is nobody in the Bible, um, like in the New Testament, that would be considered really um, successful. It's like here and there, but. Um, Jesus was uh, like a basic job, not rich. Um, the all twelve disciples, well, eleven, <laughs> um, not that rich. Um, the apostle, I mean, like Paul was like a new apostle, um, not that rich. <laughs> and so um, this this is like the real truth of Philippians four, um, where Paul says, "I've learned to live in abundance, and I've learned to lo lo um, live in lack." And um, I think it's first or second Timothy, it says, contentment and godliness is great gain. And um, I think that's just our attitudes um, towards money. Um, make sure that we are financially literate. Make sure that we are um, not in debt. Uh, make sure the love of money is not in us. Make sure that our possessions do not possess us. Remember that people are more important than things. Um, oftentimes we want to use people and love things when we are supposed to love people and use things. So get that order because what you do to the least of these is what you're doing to Jesus. So um, don't, don't do things that will separate you so far from the people that you are literally called to. When you got like a $40,000 honorarium to sing or rap or do poetry or comedy like a regular hood dude like or um i don't know a girl in poverty that really wants the gospel right um they can't afford you to come to their church because their church is a hole in the wall um like a little storefront church and so we need to acknowledge like what are we in this for is it for the people or um for souls or sold out shows or sold out souls we really need to navigate that space so that really comes from us first inwardly um posturally and stuff like that so yeah philippians 4 
um, in Philippians 2 are my go-to verses when it comes to uh, faith, financial freedom, and money. Be cool with a regular job. That's, there's no shame in that. You can do full-time ministry and full-time regular job. It's not that hard. Um, but let me hear from you um, if this video has been informative to you. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications, and um, comment below for our questions. Um, how do you navigate faith and financial freedom? Are you right now in full-time ministry or do you have a full-time job or are you doing both? Um, and how do you blend the gap if you do have a regular job? Like how do you do ministry at your regular job? If you have just a ministry job, how do you handle the business side of your ministry? <laughs> and um, make sure that you like share the video, um, connect with us on social media at The Blessing Report on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and all that other cool places. And remember, we have a set schedule now. New music uh, Mondays at seven o'clock, Winston Wisdom Wednesdays at seven o'clock, and then uh, Funny Fridays at seven o'clock. And uh, remember that everything important is in the description box below. That's all the music I'm playing. That's all the um, Bible verses I'm using and all our reference points. And speaking about money, <laughs> uh, if you want to support me in all my endeavors, um, check out my new book, Searching for Land. Um, it's in Amazon. And then my newest release, my second debut, The Science of Salvation, the manip uh, Manual for Manipulating Manufacturing Faith. Um, this is the best book when it comes to faith and financial freedom because it talks about what happens when your heart is wrong. And so this is like the screw tape letters of how to pimp the gospel and um, make money off the church. So if you know how to note a false prophet, how you can indicate prosperity gospel, um, hopefully you will not be like these um, people in the book. So. Thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, thanks for sharing. And also check out the playlist. It's going to be, I think, right here <laughs> or right here. Subscribe playlist. And remember that God blesses people by using people to bless people. So how have you been a blessing today? Thanks for watching. Something.